Rody with Groovy Cycle Works here. Going to do a short video today on airbrushing graphics onto a powder coat base. Uh, something that's a little bit of a hybrid paint job you don't get to see too often. So I thought I'd walk you through step by step kind of what it takes to uh, make this happen. So we're starting off with a steel frame. Uh, this frame and fork uh, have been <coughs> blasted with a 120 grit aluminum oxide. Uh, blown off with dry compressed air and then <clears throat> cleaned with an acetone before we went to powder coat. Uh, powder coat that was applied was just a flat black. Um, <clears throat> pretty expensive to powder coat a bike. It takes about, uh, I don't know, about a half pound of powder, which costs maybe six bucks, something like that. Uh, but the powder is applied electrostatically, it clings to the frame, and then it goes through an oven where it's melted around and almost performs like a saran wrap, and then it wraps around our frame. Uh, and that's what gives us our base to this point. Uh, typically with a powder coat, you're done at this point. Uh, but we want to add some graphics to spice up this rather plain Jane black frame, uh, which will be a all-around commuter bike, fun little club racer, etc. milk getter for Carlton uh, while he's away at school down at Ohio University. So, uh, he's decided to add some very stimulating uh, pink graphics uh, in the form of a Down Scoop logo. So, a little less than what we're normal, uh, normally used to, but should be rather cool. So, come on in here and take a closer look at the frame. Uh, the frame itself is a flat black powder. You can see it gets a little bit of a sheen on top of it. Uh, what we need to do to be able to add the pink graphics to this uh, is to number one, prep our surface area. So we're going to be sanding over top of the entire frame with a 600 grit uh, wet dry paper. Once we got the uh, sheen kind of knocked off of it and have created a mechanical tooth, then we're going to be cutting out some masking uh, on the vinyl cutter, applying that, and then airbrushing some liquid automotive paint in place. Uh, <clears throat> to do this process and to make it really work well, you have to use high quality, uh, high temperature automotive paint. Uh, today we'll be using the uh, PPG DVC series paints. Uh, which are nice because they're very compatible with the 400 degree bake cycle that we're going to need later on to put the matte powder clear over top uh, for durability and to kind of bring that look down a little bit so it's not as glossy and, and fancy. So that's what we got so far. Let's go back at it. Uh, we've cut a small uh, square patch of 600 grit wet dry paper and we're just going to be using it in the dry configuration right now. And if you come in close what you can see is we're just going to start gently using a circular rotation and we're just knocking the sheen right off of that powder, just like you see there. Uh, don't worry about this. Once we put the clear on, it's going to bring that right back up and going to look uh, just as good as when it was new. All right. While Colton's sanding the frame, knocking down the uh, sheen and getting a mechanical tooth, we're going to come over here and on the computer, we've got our down tube logo designed out in Adobe Illustrator. And we're going to be cutting that out right here on the cutter plotter. So let's show you how that happens. Um, actual logo is drawn in here. And we'll go in nice and tight for you. You can see all the independent lines. Each one of those is set up as a cutting path. Uh, so it's going to cut everything that you see marked out in black. Now we're just going to go on over here and get this thing set up to cut. I'm going to come on down to our cutter. Cut plot, it brings up an additional window, and what this window does is it sets us up so we can change the settings for the different type of vinyl, the orientation, uh, how hard we want the knife to actually go in. Um, so we're looking for just the right settings and balance that allow us to cut the top layer of vinyl but not the backing paper. So we're going to hit send, shoots us on over, and as we come over, we can see this graph tech cutter starting and it moves very fluidly and fairly quickly through our logo design. All right, our design is out of the plotter. As you can see, we have one half that still needs to be weeded. And the first half that we did, uh, we simply pulled out the scrap. There's all this little stuff right here using a small pick and meticulously just pulling out everything that we want, our pink to show through. The rest will become a positive mask that will be applied to our down tube and will block out the paint leaving black behind.
Okay, we have our graphics weeded and I've applied a transfer sheet, which is just a sticky paper that will help pull our graphics off of the sheet and allow us to place it onto the frame. Let me pull this up here, you can see, shining through the light. The lighter color there is what we're going to be painting through, which creates our positive mask. Now the other thing we've done is <clears throat> I've sized it up on the frame. So I've got the frame out here, I took my graphics, I figured out I wanted them on the down tube, and I've sized it up and I've notched out for my water bottle boss there to help use that as an indicator. And you can see I have a little dot there on that end and a dot there on that end. That's just a simple registration mark that I'm making. It's going to help me line it up on the center of the tube. So when I pull the transfer paper and the resultant mask off of the backing sheet, I can easily line it up on the tube so it's straight and in place. We have our pink paint that we're going to use, um, highly reduced, um, has a lot of uh, DT860 reducer in it, that's so it helps burn into the base layer of the powder coat, as well as keep it nice and thin, that way we can atomize it well and lay down very thin coats onto our positive masking without having a palpable edge or build up when we're all done. Now to load it up into a uh, Iwata HPC uh, Plus air gun. A really nice airbrush because it gives you good detailed control over a wide or broad range. Uh, so good stuff. Let me throw on the mask and we're going to lay down some paint. One of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that our masking is pressed down nice and flat, that we have no lifting or bulging on our edges. That way our paint doesn't find its way underneath. And then the attitude of our airbrush is going to be directly perpendicular to our tube. That way we ensure that we're shooting straight down onto our mask and not underneath to lift up and get paint to creep. There we have the first of what will probably be three coats before we have a nice opaque layer of paint laid down on this graphic. We've done a good three coats of airbrushing with the highly uh, reduced paint. Um, it allowed us to go on pretty smooth, so we're happy with the final result. What I'm going to show you now is uh, how to remove our masking. 
You can see what we've done is we've just gently taped up around the area that we've been working on. That way if we do have any overspray, like you see right there on just the edge of that tape, it prevents it from getting onto the rest of our frame. So we're going to be taking off uh, the masking around Colton's name here. <clears throat> if you get in close to the masking here, you can see we have the positive mask which goes around and then there are some small negative masks like inside the A and inside the E that will need to come off as well. As far as removing our masking, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to come from one edge and we're going to gently pull it back 180 degrees on itself as we remove this. Being careful to make sure that we lift every area just like so. Now we're going to have to go back in and remove some of these little pieces that didn't come off using our X-Acto knife. So with a nice sharp blade what we want to do is <clears throat> Typically when you approach removing masking on a tube, you want to come from along the curvature of the tube, like that. If you end up coming straight into the tube, at more of an angle, you're going to dig into the underlying paint and leave a small little divot or scar. So I'm just going to gently get in here and coming along the edge of the tube, reach in until I can palpate that and feel it, pull that away. We're going to do the same for the A and the E. Getting in nice and close, and gently lifting that up and off. And one more little tiny bitty one. And he didn't want to come with us. There we go. Simple brush over. Uh, with a <clears throat> paper towel, we'll take along any lifting edge that we still had, knock it down so it's a nice smooth transition. And that's how we're going to handle removing the masking from the rest of the frame as well. All the masking is removed. Now we're just going to set the paint because it's not fully cured yet by placing the frame and the fork into the bake box. And we're going to hit it about uh, 250 degrees for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then let it cool down slowly and naturally, and then we'll be all set. Our graphics will be applied, and we're ready for our next coat, which will be our clear coat. Hope you enjoyed the video. This will make setting up and doing detailed masking for you much easier in the future. Take care.